What's up guys, this is Z House from Gun Gamers, and today I'm gonna to be talking about medic systems for Airsoft. I'm gonna be talking about some of the various ones I've used, some of the various ones I've had practice with, uh, some of the ones I've played with, some of the pros and cons of each of them, and what my personal favorite things about different medic systems are, and maybe some ideas for how to improve medic systems in Airsoft, or just to spitball things that you can play with at your own events or that maybe event promo uh, promoters would like to play with. I don't know, it's all just ideas, all spitballing, just discussion, and maybe I'll answer some of your questions about different medic systems at different events because I know I constantly get people asking me these types of questions when they're looking at going to certain events, so maybe I can help you out with that. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. So the most basic definition, just in case you're watching this, you've never played Airsoft before, you've never played Airsoft with the medic system, what is a medic system? Well, a medic system is a system in your Airsoft game, often used at military simulation games or more organized types of events, even if it is just like an open play. Uh, what you're gonna get is an ability to bring players who have been hit back from the dead, so to speak, heal them and have them resume play, you know, take off their red rag or stand up from whatever dramatic death they did, and then they can resume playing. The idea behind this is that you are essentially able to have multiple lives uh, while you are out on the field, and you don't have to go back to respawn every time you get hit, provided that you have a medic or another player near you who is able to heal you. And that depends on all the rules. One of the things that changes a lot from event to event is whether or not a player can heal you as an anybody, or if there needs to be a specialty medic role that needs to heal you. Uh, there's pros and cons to having both of these, and there are some hybrid systems that I think kind of get the best of both worlds out of it. Now, when you have a medic system where any player can heal you, that basically still rewards unit cohesion and doesn't rely on one person to make sure that a whole squad doesn't have to go back to respawn. Because I can't tell you how many games I've been to where the person who volunteers to be the medic loses their squad and then their squad is pretty much bone. Now, of course, you can remedy this if you're able to maintain coordination with your medic, but that's not always possible, especially at a little bit more casual games. So for a lot of more casual events, I kind of like having either a system where every player can heal every other player or having a system where there's several medics on each side, maybe like two medics per squad. Because when you go to those more casual games, you're not always gonna have large squads of people who know each other. When you don't have large squads of people who know each other, it becomes harder and harder to maintain unit cohesion, and that's something that you see more of at larger events where you've got entire squads and groups of players who can really make sure that they're doing a good job staying together and keeping their medic safe. Now, of course, having a medic also has its pros, though, because if you have it where every player can heal every other player, then it just becomes a free-for-all, and there really is no major reason to keep squads or fire teams together, and as a result, you can have just two guys go out and just keep medicing each other, and... And that gets a little bit cheesy sometimes. I can definitely see why when you go to more organized events, why when you go to different uh, levels of event, you don't want to have that be the case in every case at least. So having a medic, a fire team or a squad medic does kind of force unit cohesion because if you lose your medic or you don't keep them safe or you play too aggressively or too stupidly as the medic, then you basically have taken away that force multiplier for your squad and you are no longer able to be as effective as you once were. Because if you think about it, a lot of these medic systems, you can be healed twice. And if you can be healed twice, that basically means each one of your players is three players because they can be hit three times before they're out of the game. Now you get hit once, healed once, hit again, healed again, healed again, and then you get hit again and you're finally out. Whereas if you don't have your medic with you or and you can't be healed, then guess what? You know, you're basically just done for. So it really does balance out and see, uh, it really encourages cohesive squads to be the ones who win more gunfights. And if you wanna really have it where uh, it's a higher skill type of event, I think that that is a very good way to do it. Now the hybrid system, uh, one of the more interesting hybrid systems, take a shot, Milsim West, 
is where you can be healed once by anybody with a tourniquet, or you can be healed twice by anybody with another tourniquet if you're wearing body armor and a ballistic type helmet, which is, we talked about that in our body armor rules video. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But you can be healed by anybody once or twice if you're wearing you know, weighted body armor and ballistic helmet. And then to be healed a second or third time, you actually have to be given a bottle of water by a combat lifesaver or by a medic. And if you can't be given a bottle of water at a CCP, then you basically have to go back to wherever your company is, find your platoon medic, and really be brought in, brought back in that way. So that allows groups to you know, create kind of CCP situations and keep pushes going that way using their medic. Or if you can't do that and you can't be intelligent about that, then unfortunately you're not gonna be as effective as you could be. Realistically, you're gonna be half as effective as you could be. Um, and I think for Milsim West, for that type of continuous 40 hour event, that works out pretty well. Not a perfect solution for every event, but um, I actually really like the Milsim West medic system. So that's the one I'm gonna talk about first. The Milsim West medic rule calls for uh, the first time you get hit, you can actually be buddy-aided by anybody. And to be buddy-aided, they're gonna use your Milsim West tourniquet. Now, your Milsim West tourniquet is not allowed to be pre-threaded, pre-staged, like, you know, wrap it through how it would be after you take it off. Your Milsim West tourniquet is supposed to be just like this, Velcroed to itself, nothing through the tri-glide. That is supposed to be totally open. And that can be on your gear, it can be in your combat shirt sleeve, it can be secured to your gun, it can be anywhere as long as your teammates know where to get it. And when you are hit, you flop over and do a whole dramatic death, which is the best, dramatic deaths are the best, and I will fight you on this if you try to argue with me. Uh, so when you get hit, you flop over, do your dramatic death, and then any player, any player can come up to you, and if they get to you within five minutes after you are hit, they can take out your tourniquet, undo it, flip it over, put it on your limb, work it through, which uh, is much, much easier with two hands. So I'm just gonna do it with two hands. They can work it through, put it on your limb, pull it tight, and it can't be pulled too tight because this has some elastic in it. And once that is cinched down, secured, you are back in the game. It's to simulate that someone has put a tourniquet on a gunshot wound, and now you are able to go back into the game. And if you are wearing body armor with uh, five pounds per training plate, real ballistic armor, or uh, and and a ballistic helmet, you are actually allowed to have two tourniquets. And that's to simulate the fact that you are able to take hits to your rifle plates and you're probably able to continue the fight more effectively than someone who's totally unarmored if they were theoretically to get hit in the torso or whatever. Uh, and I think that's much more fair than just having it be like where they can tank hits. I think it's like, hey, you can be buddy-aided again. But when you can no longer be buddy-aided, you actually have to be brought back to life because when you're wounded, that is a different status of being dead. Being hit and uh, being hit in a state where you can be brought back to life with a tourniquet means you are wounded. And that means that you can be brought back with a tourniquet and then be immediately back into the game from anywhere by anybody. But when you are hit a second time or a third time if you have body armor and you cannot be brought back with a tourniquet, that is actually a dead state. You are dead. And when you are dead, you are fully dead can't talk, can't call for medic or anything, and you need to be brought, you need to actually be brought back to a CCP after your five minute bleed out, or you need to be, uh, you need to serve your bleed out. After your bleed out, you go back to a CCP and you can actually be brought back with a bottle of water, a full half liter bottle of water, and you must drink that entire bottle of water and give that bottle of water back to your squad first responder or to your, uh, or to your platoon medic, and then they will be able to turn that in to get more bottles of water. And you have to finish that in order to be brought back in as at that point, a fresh troop. So the idea behind that is that you are supposed to set up CCPs a little bit back away from the action to simulate that, okay, now that I'm bled out, now that I'm dead, I can go back to my squad or platoon or company, whatever CCP, and drink my bottle of water and then reinsert as a new troop. 
Um, a couple of the downsides with this medic system. As I said, you are not allowed to stage your Milson West tourniquet threaded through. Um, a lot of people do, if I'm being honest, and unfortunately, it's just one of those things where cadre can yell at you when they see it, but other than that, there's really nothing you can do about it. It's, it's like people, you know, calling hits. It's a dumb airsoft argument, and I don't think that that necessarily alters the balance of the medic system that much, but the problem that does alter the balance of the medic system a little bit when it happens, and Cadre definitely yells at people when this happens, um, is there used to be a more widespread problem at Milson West of people misinterpreting the bottle of water rule where you would just toss bottles of water to people who were on the battlefield dead having bullets whiz over their head, and they would just chug the bottle of water and immediately take off their tourniquet, be healed, and now they could have, you know, Two more hits essentially before they could be brought down and they would basically be immediately respawning from a dead state on the battlefield magically brought back to life and you're suddenly having to overrun this position where you may have a squad first responder not really setting up a ccp away from the action but instead like tossing bottles of water to people and then they would chug the bottle of water and immediately resume fire um that again it's the typical airsoft thing you know just like calling hits, you really have to make sure that people are on top of, hey, you really you really need to set up a CCP. I think uh, Cadre has done a good job cracking down on that. I have not seen that nearly as much at any of the recent Milson West games I've gone to. Uh, it used to be a little bit more of a widespread thing, but I think that as the experience level of the player base has grown and as Cadre has informed more people, it's gotten a bit better. But that is a weakness of the medic system is without enforcement, people kind of game it. But airsoft in general, am I right? That's the same with any of the medic systems I'm about to talk about. And then you've got the AMS medic system where when you are hit, a medic, and it has to be a medic, can come up to you and use one of, use one of your two ace bandages that you're allowed to carry. And those two ace bandages are supposed to be three feet in length and they are required to wrap those entirely around your arm to the point where they can neatly tuck it, and then you are considered back in the action. And that is much like your non-pre-staged Milson West tourniquet, supposed to simulate that there's a little bit of work and a little bit of rest needed to bring people back to life. And you can this can be done anywhere, uh, but if you're smart, you'll still set up a CCP a little bit back away from the action so that you don't have to risk your medic charging into the middle of a crazy situation in order to bring people back to life. Um, but what I like about this system is another one of my favorite medic rules is that there is some work needed to bring people back to life. And as a result, it's a little bit more harrowing and it's a little bit more intense, and a little bit more challenging. And because it requires a medic, it tries to encourage squad cohesion, which for the type of event AMS is, I think makes a lot of sense. You don't want to have it where every player can heal every other player because then you're not really rewarding the more coordinated squads taking advantage of the different roles. And it makes the medic class relevant and it makes class-based gameplay more important. But you can be healed twice with those three foot uh, with those three foot ace bandages and you have to serve a five minute bleed out and at any point in that five minute bleed out, a medic can wrap and then you can take off your kill rag, stuff it in your pocket and resume playing. Uh, that's what I really like about it though, is that it's simple. It's very simple, it's not hard to understand. One arm gets an ace bandage, the other arm gets an ace bandage. When both arms have ace bandages, you have no more ace bandages, you can't be healed anymore. Go back, serve your final bleed out, go back to respawn, CCP, forward operating base, whatever you've got that you're allowed to respawn at. And I think that's very simple, it's very idiot proof, and for like uh, what I would call not an ultra super hardcore Milsim West type Milsim, for like a more intermediate Milsim, I think that that's a very good medic system to have. I think it offers a lot of benefit and you don't have to clean up the ace bandages at the end of the day, ideally. The problem is that a lot of people don't read the rule set necessarily. And you'll, you will see some people playing who've got just like a little bow and then they've got like two feet of ace bandage dangling out because their medic didn't fully wrap it. Now, combat embeds will usually yell at you if they see that happen, they'll usually call you out, but it's the type of thing where you will see it in photos from AMS games where people have just huge drapes of bandage dangling off them, and that's not how the game is supposed to be played. But 
if you take any lesson away from this video, it's that you can create the best rule set in the world and airsofters will still find a way to ruin it. Now, Third Coast Airsoft, who I haven't actually played at yet, I've really been meaning to get out to a game, but Third Coast Airsoft actually uses the same medic system as AMS, with one exception, they also allow Milsim West or other Milsim branded tourniquets. And I think that's pretty neat, is that you've got that little bit of a blend. So, you know, if you've got the non-pre-staged tourniquet, still some work required to apply it, you've got that little bit of extra realism of having a tourniquet, or if a player doesn't have a tourniquet, doesn't have access to tourniquets, uh, no real tourniquets, by the way, no rule sets that allow real tourniquets to be used. You don't want people without training applying a real tourniquet to you when you don't need it. Trust me, just don't use real tourniquets ever. No real tourniquets. Don't even modify real tourniquets. Get a fucking Milsim West tourniquet. Get a TCA Milsim tourniquet if that's the event you're going to. Get whatever Milsim tourniquet meets the rules for the event you're going to. Do not use a real tourniquet. They cut off your blood supply. That is the point of a tourniquet. You do not want to cut off your blood supply unnecessarily. Do not use a real tourniquet. Anyway, so Third Coast actually allows tourniquets and ace bandages, but otherwise is an identical medic system. And I kind of like that blend for the type of event that Third Coast is. Again, you know, that kind of... Uh, that intermediate level of milsim where you're not, you know, out in the field for 40 hours and super hardcore sleeping out in the field, but where, you know, you want to have something relatively simple, doesn't generally, doesn't generate a lot of garbage, and is equally as friendly to the hardcore as to the relatively newer guys. I think it's a good balanced medic system for that, and I think that that's cool. Next medic system I want to talk about is the Emsato medic system. And this is a medic system that I've played a few times, and I really, uh, I don't really like this medic system. Um, and I, I have the rudiment arms hit stick here because this event I went to very recently required these to keep track of their own medic system, which actually used uh, band aids. Basically, uh, when you were hit, I'll talk about this medic system because I thought this one was pretty interesting. When you were hit once, you had to have a strip of medical tape placed on you, and then your hit stick had to be marked down to keep people honest about, hey, you know, I've been healed once already. Uh, when you get healed again, you would have two band-aids or pieces of medical tape put on you, and then the hit stick would be brought down to show that you'd been healed twice. You could be healed a third time with three band-aids or pieces of medical tape, and then the medic would know that they had to apply that much because there were these two things on the hit stick. And then after you're hit again, and there's no more room left on your hit stick, you're, you're just done, you're dead. Um, that I actually uh, kind of like because it, it did help keep track of the, uh, of the amount of times a player had been healed. It kind of helped keep track of how many times a player had been hit. It made sure that the medic actually had to go through the work of applying the one, two, or three strips or band-aids, and that was pretty interesting. Um, that event was uh, Maelstrom at Sector 7. That was a really good event. Uh, that was my first time playing Airsoft in four months, so cool. Um, anyway... The system that this was originally designed for, though, this hit stick, was for Emsato and Centurion. I don't really like the way Emsato's medic system works. Uh, the reason I don't like Emsato's medic system is because you are supposed to be hit and bleeding out for a full five minutes before you can be healed and brought back into the game. And I get why this is on paper, in practice, though, it really falls apart. Now, on paper, I think that's supposed to simulate and you know give people time to overrun a position. So if you shoot somebody and they get hit, they're supposed to be down and out of the fight for five minutes. So if you've got a squad and you're wiping them out, you can't just have them get dragged back to a CCP, have a, uh, have a bandage or a tourniquet or whatever applied to them and have them immediately back in the fight. You're not fighting you know, 18 people at once if you're fighting six people, basically. Instead, you're fighting six people, and if you can wipe them out quick enough, you've wiped them out. And I also think it's supposed to simulate spending some time on a medic actually having to, you know, keep track of patients and having to, uh, having to really worry about being there at the right time after the five minutes is up to be able to untie their knot, which, because normally this is done with a red piece of paracord that has two knots in it. And after the five minutes are up, you can either have uh, one of the tabs from your hit stick flip down, and that simulates that the medic has brought you back in and shows that you've been healed once, or 
one of those knots can be untied. The thing I don't like about that though is that you have people out of the fight for five minutes every single time that they are hit. And as a result, the number of people who actually wait that five minutes before getting medicked is not high. <laughs> there are a lot of people who kind of ignore the rule. And when you go to an Amsato game, there's a ton of people who just immediately untie that knot and are immediately back in the game as if they'd been tourniqueted or bandaged. And now you're like, well, what was the entire point of that then? The, the entire point of the five minutes and the knot is that you're supposed to be able to overrun a position as you're eliminating people. There's a lot of people who just immediately untie those knots. And when you get hit, if after those five minutes, you don't get brought back to life, you have to wait another five minutes in place before going to f leaving to find a, uh, a squad or a platoon medic or a CCP or a respawn point. And then you can go back and have your uh, either have your knot untied if you want to like rejoin your squad at a CCP or go back to a main respawn and then you're able to retie your knots and go back out as a fresh player. So this kind of wastes a lot of time every time you get hit. And I guess the idea is that it makes you play a little bit more intelligently, but with how often people cheese the system, it's... It's very frustrating. It's a very confusing system to a lot of new players, which I think, honestly, I don't think people even cheese it on purpose. I just think it's one of those systems where a lot of people look at it and they're like, really, I gotta wait five minutes before getting healed? And then if I don't get healed, I gotta wait another five minutes before walking back to respawn, which depending on the AO, might be a long fucking walk. So it's, eh, I'm not really a huge fan of that system. I get the intention behind it on paper, but in practice, I kind of think it falls apart. And I say that as someone who cares, you know, it's, it's just, I don't really like that system. I'm not talking shit about the hit stick, by the way, Rudiman Arms. Uh, you know, I actually met those guys this weekend. They were very nice guys. And I'm not even talking shit about him, Sato. He's a very, uh, Tom is a very nice guy as well. I just think the medic system needs some improvement. And the way I would improve it, frankly, is just by saying flat out, the knots can be untied immediately. If the knot isn't untied within five minutes, then you have to go find a CCP or a respawn. I think having the five minute wait time is a little bit unnecessary. And uh, if you're gonna get rid of the five minute wait time, maybe it makes sense not to use the hit stick for Amsato, but Centurion has the version of the medic rule that I'm talking about. Uh, now, I have not played a Centurion event since their joint op Gladio with Emsato in 2016, but their version of this kind of rule set, they used the, um, they originally used the red rope with the two knots like Emsato, but in their tax op, it calls for within five minutes that can be untied. And if it's not untied within five minutes, then you go to a CCP or a respawn. I like that iteration of the rule set better. And uh, the hit stick was actually developed for Centurion so that a medic could just come up, flip this thing down, and then you know that they've been hit once. Um, I think there's other things with their rule set too that aren't in their tax op, but I, I'm sure that's explained better if you go to one of their games. I have not been, so I can't really speak authoritatively on the subject, unfortunately. But I think that that personally is a better iteration on Emsato's medic rule uh, if you're gonna use that type of rule set. Because even untying those paracord knots with gloves on can be a real pain in the ass. So that's my personal opinion, at least. Now, uh, Lion Claw's medic system has undergone several iterations throughout the years. I think currently they allow tourniquets and they allow ace bandages, um, which is a good blend. You know, let people who want to use a tourniquet use a tourniquet. Let people want to use the ace bandage use the ace bandage. Uh, I don't think they require the ace bandage to be fully wrapped with the whole three feet thing because they also allow the tourniquets, which are so much faster. Um, but they had a couple of different medic systems during the period of time when I was going to Lion Claws games. And the couple of different medic systems they used was they had one where you had two playing cards on you and your medic would have to take one of your playing cards to bring you back into the game. So then you had two playing cards, the medic would take one and 
you were able to go back out. And when you went back to respawn, you would draw two more playing cards and you would have, you know, basically respawn cards. You would have to hand that off to your medic and they would be able to heal you. Uh, they also at one point used um, basically masking tape or medical tape. And they would wrap that around your arm a couple of times rip it off, and then you would be able to take your kill rag off and you would be healed. Now, the medical tape uh, system, I don't mind for a couple of reasons. Uh, I don't think it's as convenient for the event promoter as the ace bandages, but for open plays, especially ones where the fields are very diligent about cleaning, uh, it works pretty well. But for large games on large AOs, it has one major disadvantage, and that is garbage. Medic tape almost always comes off of people, and when people get to respawn, they have to pull that medic tape off to reset themselves, and that stuff ends up on the ground all the time. Now, it's easy enough when you're hosting a game at somewhere like River City or an indoor field or some other like relatively smaller open play that's well cleaned regularly. You know, you can manage that garbage, and they usually have garbage bins at you know, respawn, which players never use, but... The thing I like about that system is that players don't really have to bring anything. It's easy enough for you as the event promoter to just hand off some, you know, masking tape, medical tape, just hand a bunch of rolls off to each of the squad medics and they're good to go for the whole event. I mean, the odds of them going through all of their medic tape, if you hand them five or six rolls, not very high at most of these casual events, most of these, you know, not ultra hardcore milsim events, they're probably not going to go through all of it. But... Garbage is a serious concern with this because, like I said, players are going to be ripping that stuff off. It's going to be falling off as they sweat. And as a result, you're going to have little pieces of tape everywhere. And if you're the event promoter, guess who that's on? That's you. You got to go sweep up all that garbage or you got to pay people to go sweep up all that garbage. Now, I've talked a lot about Milsim medic systems. Uh, about Milsim medic systems, that's pretty much all the variations you're gonna run, to, run into. Now let's talk about some medic systems I've played at maybe some more open play type games. I talked about the one for uh, Maelstrom, which I guess really wasn't an open play, that was really kind of a coordinated mini Milsim. Uh, but then you've got uh, one of the more interesting rules I've seen is at Ground Zero Airsoft in Connecticut. Their medic system is actually where you have a three minute bleed out upon being hit, but after the first two minutes and 30 seconds, during the last 30 seconds, any player can come up to you, maintain physical contact with you for those 30 seconds, and if at the three minute mark after, you know, from 2.30 to three minutes, if a player has maintained physical contact with you, you are good to go, you are healed. Pull off your dead rag, you are healed in place. And you can do that, as far as I know from all the briefings, an unlimited number of times. And I kind of like that because, you know, for those two and a half minutes, you're out and it makes it easier to roll over positions, you know, because you're not having people being brought back in immediately with a 30 second touch. But it does still encourage unit cohesion because you've got people who do have to rely on everybody to be a medic. Anybody can be a medic. You can have people assigned to it. You can move dead people to a CCP if you want to and have someone, you know, keep contact with them. But the trade-off is, if at any point during those 30 seconds, either player, the one doing the healing or the one being healed gets shot, both of you are dead, go back to respawn. So there's some risk reward to it. The con to it though is, just like I have mentioned with all these medic systems, people will forget that you're supposed to wait that two and a half minutes or people won't have a watch or a sense of time and won't really know how long two and a half minutes is and they will just immediately run up to somebody, hold the 30 seconds, be like, you're good, you're good, you're back in. It's like, no, I'm not good, I'm not back in. And I've had to stop people and tell people before, they'll come up to me to medic me as soon as I get hit, and I'll be like, I got two minutes and 15 seconds before I can be brought back in. You, you kind of really have to keep people honest with it. Um, again, it's one of those things where refs, when they see it, they'll call it out and more experienced players will call it out, but it's something that you really have to pay attention to. And it's kind of a variation on what you see in a lot of other fields. Uh, when they play medic rules, they'll just do a 30 second touch. And I don't hate that system for your average open play game. Just come up, hold your hand on somebody for 30 seconds, you know, count to 30, and then you're back in. And for your average open play, that's about as complicated as most medic rules need to be, to be honest. It's fine. Uh, you need to make sure people are actually counting to 30. 
Uh, you need to make sure they're actually holding it for the 30 seconds to have some semblance of balance. And I just be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you know, so on and so forth. But it's kind of a good system. I kind of like it. Uh, it's pretty neat. And just for na your normal average open play with people who might not have ever been to a Milsim game, totally fine. Dig it. Then you've got uh, the rule set at Omega Productions, which you know I can't make a video without mentioning Omega Productions, my friends Frank and Alex. So at Omega, bandages are a consumable resource. They can be used once. They are a roll of medical tape, and that medical tape can be used to revive you. But once that roll of medical tape is out, it's out. And you're going to need to beg, borrow, steal, trade, or loot to hope to get more medical tape. Any player can use the medical tape. There's no specific medic role or class or anything that's needed for it. But whoever you give that medical tape to better be careful because that medical tape is a lootable item. So that's pretty neat. And uh, I know that Revelations does something similar with their stim packs that can be used to heal people. Um, but the way Omega does it, where it's a finite resource, is awesome. I really, really like that way of doing it for that post-apocalyptic event theme. Because when it's a finite resource, it's all the more valuable. So if you complete something for an NPC and they give you a roll of medical tape, you know that it's a big deal. And now you've got this force multiplier for as long as you have it. And you want to be careful and protective of that resource. Because anybody can kill you and take it from you. Or it's very valuable in trade. So you can make use of it that way. And I think that that's a really cool way to incorporate an airsoft medic system into a role-playing game. Having it be that type of resource force multiplier that can be traded, looted, earned, exchanged. It's really cool. I really dig it. And uh, I almost wish there were more games that did something like that. But I'm not sure how you would really incorporate it into a, uh, into a Milsim setting other than like with Milsim West, where during Milsim West games, the enemy can steal your bottles of water and thus basically eliminate your CCP and gain those bottle of water resources for themselves. And that, that really gets pretty tricky at some situations. So that's pretty cool. And that's, uh, that's another thing that adds that level of realism to Milsim West, which of course I'm going to talk about Omega and Milsim West in this video. Those are two of my favorite event promoters. Sorry guys, I'm very biased. I'm very open about this. Anyway, I think that covers a lot of the medical systems that are out there right now. Um, basically those are pretty much all the medic systems you're going to run into. Uh, you know, Desert Fox events used to have their thing where the squad medic would scan the QR code after you were buddy aided. Uh, they've, you know, they've put that on hiatus because they're still trying to make the app work better with bringing people back in after they mark themselves as dead in the app. So for now, they're just using the Milsim West tourniquet as buddy aid. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, that's all the medic systems that I have a lot of practice with. And if you have any other ones that are weird and interesting, put them in the comments because I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hopefully, I answered some of your questions. Maybe I raised some questions of your own. Maybe I gave you some ideas. And if you've got anything that you want said or that you want answered or that you want to just put on out there, if you want to tell me my face is stupid, if you want to talk about what a great band Rivers of Nile is, comment section is right down there. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. I hope it was informative and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Check the description below if you'd like to buy a t-shirt or a patch, and use the coupon code JUDY10 for 10% off of your next order at Amped Airsoft. Thank you again for watching, and praise Judy.